Hey everyone, Rizwan Jagani here. I'm back talking to you guys after I don't know how long it's been I've done a video like this where I give information rather than just perform. And I'm doing this because this idea has been in my head for a very, very long time and a lot of my friends and colleagues and even merch sellers, Alto Clef Gifts, uh, Lisa, thank you very much, have asked me to maybe put this idea out into the world for all the violists out there that want to know how to play without a shoulder rest. Now for violinists, this will also benefit you, cellists and non-musicians and music appreciators who to whom this doesn't apply, just please give me a thumbs up and a comment just because, you know, I can use them. But anyway, I wanted to finally do this video because by around early to mid-February, I actually stopped playing with a shoulder rest and I actually ended up doing so out of necessity and not so much because I wanted to explore the idea, though that had been one of my intentions. I actually needed to ditch the shoulder rest in order for me to actually continue playing. And a lot of it stemmed with this new viola that I got, Simba, who has made his appearance in many of my most recent videos, especially in 2020. And I decided, you know, finally, I'm gonna put out all the information that I got in my sort of learning experience and share it with all of you. So part of the reason why it was absolutely necessary for me to explore the idea of play without a shoulder rest simply for health Two of my mentors do play without shoulder rest, and that's Ishvan Polony from the Budapest Festival Orchestra and Tatiana Midshamis from the Pittsburgh Symphony Orchestra, who is also my repertoire and orchestral excerpts teacher at Carnegie Mellon University, where I was doing my master's. And I had known I maybe wanted to explore doing that and wanted to do that just because, you know, it's kind of cool seeing violas that play without shoulder rest, but I didn't really know how to go about it. Then when I started playing with Simba, I was noticing things that were hindering my playing and that's how I ended up deciding that hey maybe this is something I need to do. So here is Simba and I'm going to start off first of all with why I decided to switch to playing without a shoulder rest. I had two huge issues and these were physical issues that I was having. So I had been using a wooden uh, shoulder rest that was a very lightweight one to kind of take the weight of slightly heavier instrument and it felt good, it matched my shoulder pretty nicely, but what I noticed was that it kept the viola quite high above my shoulder. So as a result, I never felt as though my body was touching the viola. I kind of felt as though like, hey, where's my viola? Even though it was very securely in place, you know, uh, Lukash himself gave me this chin rest um, after watching me play. So I knew this chin rest was working for me. It was more just, I couldn't figure out where my body was in relation to the instrument. The other issue I was having was that with everything being higher courtesy of the shoulder rest, my arm was having to reach to get to the contact point more. And as a result, I would just get tired very, very quickly. I would play for maybe 30 minutes or I couldn't even go through a concert without being like, oh, I am getting tired now for, you know, orchestral playing, chamber music, even solo stuff. If you're already feeling tired or you're feeling stuck, that's not a good thing. Now I'm gonna talk a little bit about the approaches and how I figured out how to play without a shoulder rest. Now I will preface this by saying, this worked for me. Everyone's bodies are different. Everyone's instruments are different. I'm going to just also say, you know, try different things, you know, talk to people, ask different people about what they do as well. But this is what works for me. And I really hope it does work for you if you give it a try. So what I did was I spoke first of all to Tatiana and she told me, the exact same thing that I'd sort of been learning throughout my state, uh, my playing right now is that the body supports the instrument and specifically on the collarbone, which is right here. So your collarbone basically serves as a nice little table for the instrument because when you're moving your shoulder and your back to facilitate the left hand, left arm movement, the instrument pretty much stays put, but you can kind of maneuver it because it is free. She also did tell me, and this was very early on, the best piece of advice that she gave me was to make sure that I was solid in my left hand technique. That way I could make slight adjustments to my playing rather than having to overhaul my technique to adjust playing without the shoulder rest. And, you know, around this time earlier in the spring, but around January, um, I was fairly good with my technique in my left hand. So I was ready to sort of make the switch and I knew that my technique would not falter but I would still have to check myself to make sure I wasn't playing with tension. The other thing is you may want to raise your chin rest. A lot of people have a, a really nice chin rest in the sense that, you know, it, it works for them and it feels good, but it may not be high enough. I would recommend maybe putting one or two corks underneath and that might help. I wouldn't go too high because what'll happen is it changes the angle 
on which it'll approach your body and it may kind of interfere with how you place it on the instrument and then your case may not close. So all these other things, I often say less is more. So with the chin rest, start with one, maybe two corks to raise it and make sure it's a chin rest that you like even if you're playing with a shoulder rest. Because these tips will also apply to a shoulder rest if you feel it is too disconcerting to play with that one, you can at least know how to approach better playing. So the other thing was, and I reached out to a violist on Instagram who is now one of my social media viola friends, Jesus Rodolfo, and he told me about the sponge that he uses. This is a makeup wedge sponge. He got this really cool bright pink one from Sephora. Sephora doesn't make them anymore, so I found this online. And you glue them together and you put them on the back. Now, just because you have a sponge and you a raised chin rest, how do you approach doing this? Well, if you think about it, rather than raising the instrument to fill the space, think about the space underneath the instrument. And the sponge slash shoulder rest serves as a space filler. So what I end up doing is, I'm gonna show you with my sponge. So right here, here's the sponge. I go to a mirror and I look, and then I see the space here that needs to be filled with something to prevent me from raising my shoulder and to prevent me from clamping down. Even though it seems like there's still a, bit amount, a good amount of space, remember you don't wanna lock your shoulder or your neck in place. So a little bit of wiggle room is always good because it allows you to maneuver and it doesn't and it prevents you from being locked up. So after figuring out where the sponge is gonna go and where it feels nice, I flip the instrument over and there it is, which is exactly where I have it and been having it nice and secure. So I just put a rubber band on there and I leave it as is, even in my case, nothing happens to it. I will caution, however, everyone's instruments are different. So varnishes may behave differently with different materials. So you may just want to use a little bit of caution if you're using certain things. In my experience, um, rubber shelf liner works really well on this viola, did not work on Aguila. Aguila's varnish would do weird things. So I would just recommend be a little bit careful with your materials. Quick overview. Let's just take a look at this again. Think about your collarbone working as a table for your instrument. Your head is supporting the top. The body is supporting the bottom of the instrument. We raise the chin rest to close the little bit of space that we need from the instrument to our jaw. And the sponge or the shoulder rest replacer is a shoulder space filler. Remember, just because you are using a different material, you're not substituting it for the shoulder rest's role. As in, you're not using it to fill space and raise it and, you know, prevent yourself from kind of maneuvering with the instrument. Remember, your body is a fluid, constant energy system, and the instrument needs to be part of that. Often we hear, bring the instrument to us as opposed to bringing ourselves to the instrument. So when we brought the once we've brought the instrument to ourselves, we incorporate it in how we play. So now I have my bow, and I'm just going to show you how I play now without the shoulder rest. So what I noticed myself immediately is that the sound is so much better. It feels a lot more free. I don't feel as though I'm stuck anywhere. I can move my head, neck. I can check, you know, where my contact point is. I can check my fingers if I need to. I can look forward and I play, which is usually what I typically do. I look forward when I play. And being daredevilish enough, I learned this from Kim Kashkashian, this little thing. To keep space open while also keeping the instrument on you. That way you don't feel tense at all. And it's part of a whole checklist in just making sure that you can play without tension and to feel free as possible. And if you do play with a shoulder rest, keep in mind this big piece of information. Your shoulder rest is just a space filler. Don't treat it as something that needs to chunk up the instrument so high that you're playing up here in the stratosphere. We want to worry about this stratosphere, not this one. So if you're so this high up here, you're going to have issues if you're playing with a high shoulder rest. Use your shoulder rest just to fill space if you choose to do so. Now, if you choose not to use a sponge, I do recommend maybe having something on the back that will at least provide traction so it doesn't come off your shirt. Um, I kind of still wish that uh, men can play in tank tops in formal settings because it'd be nice to just have the instrument, you know, on contact with our skin. 
so that way it just feels a little bit closer and the slippage isn't as much but you know we wear tuxedos we wear a lot of things that's you know can be slippery so you want to make sure that you're not slipping i have tried playing without a sponge i still prefer having some sort of space filler but this is really great i'm glad i could finally do this video i really hope it's helpful if there's any question or something or you want me to clarify something please comment below give me a thumbs up on this video i want to give a special thank you to jesus rodolfo tatiana michamis and ishvan polony who were kind of my motivating guiding figures in figuring out how to do this i also want to give a special thank you and acknowledgement to kim kashkashian because she does address this very well in a tuttle coordination video that is on youtube and i do hope uh some sort of approach based on the information that I've given you, does provide useful. And I hope that I can continue talking to you more about musical things in my life. This was one of it. I may do a video on my viola because Simba is quite special. I've had him for a year now. And I might even do some other things. I might spill some tea on music because, you know, why not? Anyway, I hope to see you soon again. Thank you so much. Take care. Be safe. Be healthy. Um, you know, it's been one crazy year. And let's just hope for the best for the next one that's coming. Thank you so much.